Let's suppose that the cat is currently at a party in a room full of balloons of different colours. We want the cat to constantly be moving and to change its looks depending on the colour of the balloon it is touching at any point. More particularly, we want to write a program where if at any point the cat touches a green balloon, the cat changes colour. If at any point the cat touches an orange balloon, the cat grows. And if at any point the cat touches a violet balloon, the cat shrinks. Let's create a new project. We'll start by introducing the background for a room with balloons. For this, we'll be using an image that we've created for you. Press this button here on the left that lets us upload a backdrop from file. We'll navigate to the balloon stage image and select it. Great, we're now at a party. Let's start programming the cat's behaviour. We'll first click on the cat to have access to its script area. We'll introduce a green flag to indicate the beginning of our program. As said, we want the cat to be constantly moving, so we'll introduce a forever block and put a move 10 steps block and an if on edge bounce block. We'll start coding the first statement, where the cat changes colour if at any point it touches a green balloon. There is an if keyword in this behaviour, so this gives us a hint that there is a selection involved here. Let's program it. We'll first introduce an if then block from our control palette. We'll now go to Sensing and choose a Touching Color block and put it inside the IF condition. We want to choose green for this case. The way to do it is by clicking on the color spot in the Touching Color block and then clicking on the color we want, in this case, the green balloon. Good. Now, let's program that the cat should be changing color. We'll go to the Looks palette and select a Change Color Effects block to put inside the mouth of our IF THEN block. Now, let's try it out. Great! The cat keeps moving, and whenever it is touching a green balloon, it changes colour. Now let's program the other two statements. For the second statement, we'll put again an if then block inside the forever block, and then we'll set the condition to be touching orange, and the outcome to be change size by 5. Similarly, we'll implement our third statement by introducing another if then block in our forever stack and setting its condition to touching violet. The effect is that the cat will shrink rather than grow, so we'll make it change size by a negative number, such as minus 20. Let's test it. Hmm, it works, but the cat is getting too small. We can correct this by inserting a larger value, such as minus 5. That's better, right? Note that the cat may considerably change its looks every time you run the program. In order to bring it to its original looks at the beginning of every execution of the program, we'll use the clear graphic effects block and the set size to 100% block. Experiment a bit to change the cat's looks even more. Okay. I've noticed there's a change color effects block and a set color effects block. Do they do the same thing? What a good question, Cody. Let's investigate this. Let's substitute the change color effects block in our program with a set color effects block. Let's test it. What happened? The cat doesn't change color all the time like previously. Let's explain why. Each color in Scratch is associated with an identifying number. What the change color block does is increment this number by the value that we entered. On the other hand, the set color effects block sets this number to the value we entered. Is this any clearer now, Cody? Yes! Thank you! You can also use the forum if you have any other questions. Perfect! See you later! See ya! Now, let's have a think about what we did in this program. We broke it down in three different parts, one for its change of looks, and we tackled one after the other. When programming each part, we first thought about the behaviour that we were aiming for, for instance, change the cat's colour whenever it touches a violet balloon, and then we coded it and tested it to see if it works as expected. If it didn't, we tried to fix it. Now that I think about it, the process that we followed is an algorithm in itself. Interesting, huh? 
So far, we've been using only the Cardinal Scratch program. In the next video, we'll get to use two different sprites in the same program.